Welcome back, everyone. Toy Shiz here, and I am back in again for yet another McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse video. I know, better late than never. This is going to be the entirety of the Plastic Man Build-A-Figure wave because, well, I was missing one important figure, and we finally got that rectified. First and foremost, if you were wondering why so many Green Lanterns, Aquamans, and everything else, Scalper. Yeah, I know. It's... Platinums. Platinums galore in this wave. So we have John Stewart, and then the platinum version of said John Stewart is, of course, John Stewart in his mosaic costume. That's from the 90s. Two Aquamen, you say. What's the difference between the two? Well, we will definitely go over that. You will have the standard 90s silver harness Aquaman with the hook hand, and then, of course, a platinum, the black shoulder strap, lime green aqua pants for that one. Batman, however, is just one of these, thank God. And I knew that going through each time to Target or whatnot and just seeing that Batman, I, I just missed the figures that I needed. So I'm sick of this Batman. <laughs> but he comes with Plastic Man pieces. And then lo and behold, we finally got the two electric Superman. And yes, I'm not going to beat a dead horse enough with the Platinums. Too many Platinums, Platinums galore. Blue Electric Superman, he looks pretty cool. And then the Platinum version of the Blue Electric Superman is, of course, the Red Electric Superman, which is still important to your collection. But I want to say an eternal thank you. You are a scholar and a gentleman, Mr. Doug S. He sent one over to me Thank you very much. So a shout out, and I want to see everybody thank Mr. Doug S. down in the comments below. Thank you, sir. I hope to get you back one of these days for a figure you are looking for. But in the meantime, this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new, but I'm totally late to the party, the entire Plastic Man Build-A-Figure Wave from McFarlane Toys. So now to kick things off, we have a gaggle of John Stewart's, but certainly not John Stewart's first foray into the DC multiverse. However, I will say this is my favorite of said forays. You get two accessories per Green Lantern, a ring effect, which is fine, and then you get a wispy effect, which, if I'm being honest, and how it looks when you attach these to the figures, especially the wisp, you got lucky on that one, because that one is just like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it just seems like that was an afterthought. The ring sort of glowy blast kind of dealio, that totally works, but it could have been more in the box. Now, I will say this. Out of all the figures we're going to look at today for this wave, I think Jon Stewart really does fare the best. That's an excellent head portrait. Really came out nicely, and just a very all-around good-looking John Stewart with the costume that has him having the white gloves, very much like Hal Jordan. Thank God he has a ring. This side has a trigger holding hand, which <laughs> we're still doing this at this point. The Green Lantern symbol on his chest kind of looks like when you get a tattoo, but the tattoo artist didn't do it right, and it all starts to kind of blob together. The printing is off. It just looks very blobby, misshapen. It just doesn't look the best. The texturing has gone insane for this figure. Like it or lump it, I'm in between. I think some of it looks good, some of it's like, it looks very sweaterish, that kind of thing. But regardless, it's an okay figure. Like, it's the best ones out of the bunch. And with the mosaic costume, I think they did a great job here as well. Although an extra head portrait, something different, really would have gone the extra mile. Perhaps doing the green domino mask. That would have been fantastic. They did put a little bit more blue paint in the hair. It kind of differentiates the head portrait by a little bit. Yeah, for the most part, they got the mosaic symbol correctly. He does have the white gloves at the start, then he kind of loses the white gloves, and that would have been kind of cool to have interswappable parts for that. I know they just try to keep it simple, and then the costume's a little bit different with the green pattern and such, but it's these little things that really help us collectors. It's like, oh, wow, you're paying attention. It's not just a repaint, rehash. Yes, all the Green Lanterns go together nicely, from Hal to John to Kyle to then Mosaic John. So 
in that sense, you're building up a nice Green Lantern collection. There's also Kilowog and a few other Hal Jordans and Johns, but we don't need to talk about those. Yes, you can swap the head portraits between the costumes, but you're going to have to deal with the miscolored necks. So if you really want to paint them or do whatever you want to do in that sense, yeah, you can totally do it. And they look pretty cool when you do swap the head portraits with the Aquaman twins. You have silver, you got black, but you have all around a very cool looking hook handed Aquaman. And I will tell you this, I wasn't always a fan of this look back in the day. In fact, this was quite jarring, right? You had Aquaman, either got it cut off or piranha ate it or whatnot. I like what they did with the silver harness. I like the paint that they got going on. For all the reuse that this figure has, I think they did a good job in that sense. If you're gonna do it, at least do it properly. And I like the skin tone, the blonde hair, and especially his hook hand. That is pretty cool, it's gold. At first I thought, should there be more of the arm itself? Is it cut entirely too high? No, it's correct. It just kind of threw me for a second and I got used to it. But in either case, you got a little rotation there. All the articulation is going to be the standard McFarlane articulation. There isn't anything crazy here. There's nothing new. What I'm looking for primarily is the looks, the little details. Are you paying attention to what we see from the old comics? And I would tell you this. Yeah, for the most part, it looks pretty darn solid. So again, I'll say to have a 90s hook handed Aquaman finally at last. Hey, that's not too shabby because then you have a second version with the black harness that would show up from different storylines during this era. So again, that matches the lime green that also matches. So there's not going to be a whole heck of a lot of difference. This does make for a good platinum because this would not be the ideal look if I had to choose between the two. I much rather prefer the silver. Plus, there's a little bit of a dirtier wash, darker paint for the hair. That's a nice touch as well. So either or, you're good to go with Aquaman. Now to look at this Batman, of which I totally was going to just do a cutaway gag and say, here's Batman next. But for the sake of, well, I was late for this video, we'll look at him in totality. And I don't care for this Batman. This is a weak attempt at making a figure for this particular era of the Justice League. This terrible weapon, this terrible figure, it's just not good enough, right? It's like, here, we'll just throw this in. Is it Batman 89, the Tim Burton Batman? Is it this 90s era Justice League Batman? He has a little bit of a blue wash. It's kind of nothing all in one, except for the fact that it's the most bare minimum sort of figure that you could throw into a wave when all we needed are the Plastic Man parts. So thank God there wasn't a Platinum edition for this figure. This is just bad. Don't do this anymore, please. This is just like, ugh, all together. But, dang nabbit, you go from that Batman and now you have the two electric Supermans, of which is the craziest storyline because there was a fight of Superman rights and then they had to change the costume and they went total Shazam electricity with him and he absorbed too much electricity and then he started phasing in and out. And he had like a tame and said, you know, it's 90s baloney, but it was fun back in the day. But to be honest with you, much like the Aquaman hook hand, it took a while to get used to and then it really didn't stick around that long and we were right back to regular soups. You get these electrical particle effects. They clip on. They are the same for red or blue. It makes sense for blue. Red versions of these particle effects would have made a whole lot more sense for the red electric Superman. They're just not that great. Again, much like the Green Lantern effects, if you can get it to work, hey, A+. Plus. Most of the times, it's just kind of like, yeah, there, there it is. If anything, it kind of like brings the figures down because they don't really work exactly how you want them to be. Now, Blue Electric Superman, that's a great head portrait. They put a little wash in the hair. Again, total, let's say, not quite 90s nostalgia, but like 90s, oh yeah, I totally remember that. I remember not liking that, but much like Batman and Robin, it's grown on me over the years. The blues, the whites, from afar, Sure, that, that totally works. And yes, they actually have the S symbol on both sides, which is nice. I remember the old Mattel DCUC Classics figure didn't. He just had the electrical effects glued on to him. Again, the head portrait with the hair. That is blue electric Clark Kent Superman. And everything looks good in the sense of a McFarlane figure. There's always a caveat to that. But they reuse the arms, so he has the cuffs, and that's kind of a 
bummer. I will say, I really wish they didn't reuse the cuffs. Otherwise, it would have been stellar. Again, the articulation is going to be nothing crazy. Some extra hands really would have gone that extra mile for all of us. Some of the articulation, you're really going to have to match it up to get the blues to the whites and get it all really lined up perfectly because you can really offset it real quick. The white paint to the blue doesn't look the best. That's when you really get in there and look at it. Like I said, from afar, sure. It's really just kind of, yeah, that's cool. It's great. There's blue electric Superman. Man, I wish that was painted better. Or man, I wish they had extra accessories. That's my two cents for that. Red Superman, just cut and paste everything I just said about blue Superman. But in regards to blue electric Superman, red electric, when they split in that explosion... It was kind of like he's the fiery, hot-tempered Superman, whereas Blue Superman is kind of normal Clark Kent, but maybe a little bit more timid, that kind of deal. You get the idea. It's very straightforward. And then, lo and behold, one day, they just simply merged again. Boom, there you go. So, (laughs) that's DC Comics lore for you. You can always think, Superman sitting there one day, years and years from now, like, hey, Lois, remember when I split into two entities like I did way back in the Golden Age and they wanted to redo it? Yeah, that was wild, right? To have electrical powers for the sun and flew into the middle of the sun. and It just totally works itself out. Whatever. (laughs) It's part of the fun of comic books. It doesn't have to make any sense. A lot of us sound insane when we talk about this, much like myself talking about it in this video. Have some fun with your action figures. They are fun, after all. Now, that brings us to the Build-A-Figure Plastic Man. And... This was quite interesting to me. I wasn't even really thinking about it. If you get all the Platinums and the one Batman, you actually make two complete Plastic Mans. One will have the weird head, the other one will have the normal head, and then you have the inner swappable arms. That's not a bad deal. I kind of laughed about it. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I will say that. The normal, we'll say quote-unquote, look for Plastic Man, minus all the stretchy effect pieces, again, from afar, totally cool. Why did this have to be a -a Build-A-Figure? Got me. He's very gappy in the neck right there. Like, very gappy, where maybe we should have not done that. The head, the arms, they will swap easy-peasy. So no problemos there. The head portrait, I really wish, was separate to the neck, That way you could swap out the parts and pieces, you know what I mean? The paint is great on the glasses especially, but those teeth, I brought this up before. People said, no, the teeth are fine. That's creepy. There's a lot of teeth, like little chiclet teeth, you know what I mean? Bring the teeth down a little bit. Let's just say pump the brakes on the teeth, sculpt that a little bit better somehow, some way, because it gives them a very creepy looking smile. Is it good looking? Sure. But that would be my preferences for it. Now, the paint for what is there, for the straps of the costume, the reds, the belts, everything else, yeah, it's pretty okay. You have just plastic, we'll say silly putty type feet, which is all kinds of creepy because of what Plastic Man is. The arms are a little bit awkward, especially when they go into the hands. He has a tiny little fist and he has a giant open hand. And yes, that is the thing. They are two differently sized hands. Why? Why is this so hard to match these things up? It blows my mind. This wave, for as much as everyone t- like, oh my god, it's an amazing wave. Yeah, it's just okay. It's more of the same kind of problemos that we've seen with McFarland Toys throughout the years. When you have the body with the extra extendy parts in the neck and everything else, sure, much like Blue Superman, cut and paste, why didn't they have the neck And then you could put these swappable head portraits on the neck or the standard head. You know what I mean? Like, that would have been fun. And I can't believe they don't do that. It's kind of a no-brainer if you think about it. And that just means that they're doing the bare minimum. I want to see more here. This is Plastic Man, a -a Build-A-Figure. He should be loaded up and you should be able to swap everything. One thing I do like, though, is the hand holding its own arm and becomes a lasso. That's cool. I totally love that. That is a lot of fun and very Plastic Man-y. The other hand is, again, all that kind of silly putty type hands, which are 
terrifying. They're kind of gummy-ish. You can grab an enemy, I guess, if you want, or something. Plenty of articulation in the midsection, the waist, the legs, the knees, the feet. He's kind of hard to stand in some sense, just as an FYI. But he does have peg holes. But like I said, a little bit more in terms of I don't have to talk so much about misshapen hands or why didn't they swip swap parts pieces easier and that kind of thing. And let's talk more about how awesome and well thought out these toys are instead of just, you know, I really wish we saw this and this and this because it gets tiring and you at home go, oh, he's just complaining and I have to go, well, you come to me for these thoughts and ideas. The fact, again, that you get two plastic men, if you get all the figures for this wave, is a nice idea. Do you need to? No, not really. Do you need all the Platinums? Certainly not, except for red and blue, if you want to go that route. But again, Plastic Man is cool, but he's not, oh my god, he's mind-blowing by any means. What is fun, though, is that if you have been collecting McFarlane toys, you're really starting to put together the eras of uh, characters, the Justice League, that I particularly love. 70s, 80s, now into the 90s. Kyle Rayner, we're just going to call that Wally West, Superman, long hair, all that. That looks fantastic. That's a lot of fun. With the Justice League storyline, of which this is based off of, they started with normal Superman, and then he went into the electric blues pretty much in the next issue after they were formed. So blue electric Superman does play a significant role in this type of collection. With Plastic Man, if you want to subtract Aquaman, yeah, that also works. So again, Martian Manhunter, even though he's a teeny tiny Martian Manhunter, they all look great together, including a long-haired Superman. So again, collecting McFarlane toys is fun when you start getting all the characters together. Even to go Justice League slash Justice League Unlimited, even though we don't have a Shayera Hall, hopefully they make some more female characters. That's another big deal that I wish McFarlane toys would definitely tackle. But as I said, to round things up, Within all the Batmans, and I know that's the joke, and it's not really a joke because they certainly make a lot of Batmans. But if you're a DC fan, if you're a DC multiverse collector, you have been able to amass a ton of characters. And I know for a fact, the people that are at McFarlane Toys, and you see these particular characters, they are really big fans. These are the type of people you want making the characters, the characters that you want, that you know and love, so that it isn't always just Batman. And like I said, Batman's great, fine. He gets the bills paid, fine. But it's all the characters in between. If you collect them, you could amass a giant DC Multiverse collection of all your favorite characters, and hopefully, again, we see more characters, more deep cuts, more females, things of that nature to really bring it home. So, you've heard my thoughts, so now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse, and I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, have fun with your collections, but don't collect everything just to collect it. Write them down. Get the characters that you want and really make your collections pop. And after that, I guarantee you, you'll step back and go, man, that's a nice looking DC setup. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.